What is up everybody? GrantRobertsFunction.com for all things fitness, health and lifestyle. And today's topic is actually a viewer question. That's why I always encourage you to ask me questions and give me ideas on topics so I can cover them and answer them for you. As I always say too, if one person is asking the question, there's probably like 30 other people that want to know. So that's why I'm going to cover this because I'm sure some other people out there will probably be interested and want to know about this topic. Now I have covered some of these subjects and some of this information in general, but the question was specifically weight training or strength training for fat loss. And there's probably some misconceptions there as well. And before we start this video, you can probably tell it's quite casual. I was actually just chilling at my mom's place, watching some basketball and thought, may as well get this video done while I've got the chance and the grind doesn't stop. So it's pretty casual, but let's get it done. While I'm on a roll too, shout out to Snap Fitness, Portland, Victoria, as well as Snap Fitness everywhere. It's where I train and also take majority of my clients. And shout out to them for giving me this beautiful coffee cup as well. I also want to give a quick shout out to Gym Stees and Freezma. Shout out to you. You gave me a good discount on these clothes. They're fresh, lifestyle and gym related clothes. So support Australian brands and check out these fresh threads. <laughs> So my first point is when it comes to strength training and fat loss in particular, you don't really have to change too much when it comes to targeting a fat loss type workout compared to normal strength training. And what I mean by that is a lot of people have this misconception that you have to do really high reps, like 15, 20, 15 reps on exercises and kind of turn it into a cardio workout when you don't really have to do that at all. The main point I will make and the most important thing is if your goal is fat loss is to make sure you're in a caloric deficit, so burning up the energy you take in through food and sticking to a regular exercise regime. So the majority of us when we have a fat loss goal, we tend to swing towards cardio and dieting as the main source and strength training becomes a bit of an afterthought, which it shouldn't. And the reason is that strength training can burn just as much, if not more, fat and energy than cardio. But why is it people stick to cardio or use that as their first thought? Well, for one thing, and probably the main thing, is cardio will shrink you down, but it will shrink you overall. It will burn not just body fat, but muscle as well. Gone are the days of wanting to look skinny as a rake and being weak. So you want your goal to be lean, strong, and healthy. And how do you do that? By building muscle through strength training. So why do you want to build lean, strong muscle? Because... The larger the engine, the more fuel it burns. So the more lean muscle you have, the more fat and calories you burn. So yes, while cardio does burn fat and energy, high intensity strength training or EPOC training, short for excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, training is much more beneficial. So EPOC or excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, is just a fancy term used to describe how long your metabolism is elevated after exercise. Studies have shown that strength training can elevate your EPOC or metabolism for up to 38 hours after exercise. That's probably why I'm so damn hungry all the time. In other words, you continue to burn calories and energy well after your strength training exercise has finished. So what's the difference between that and cardio? So the difference between strength training and cardio is that when you perform cardio and then stop, that calorie and energy burning effect stops immediately after cardio, unlike strength training. And the main reason for this, I know from personal experience, is that when you perform strength training, obviously you're putting your muscles under crazy amounts of trauma and tension in order to rebuild and repair. Your body has to use energy in order to do that. So like I said, your muscles repairing and rejuvenating themselves up to 38 hours after your strength training session, your body's still working overtime to repair and recover. So that is why strength training is an optimal part, if not the most important element, coupled with exercise and a good nutritional plan in order to burn fat. So now I'll go back to my first point, answer the question specifically, strength training for fat loss, and describe why you don't have to change too much Maybe a few minor tweaks for your strength training in order to reach that goal. So this is probably the clearest answer and best advice I can give on strength training for fat loss specifically. And that is not doing crazy amounts of higher reps, which is a big misconception which people still perform, or relying on fat loss pills and drugs. 
So tip number one, perform mini circuits, also known as supersets. You might do a push and pull movement, like a dumbbell chest press followed by a barbell row. Or you might do some squats followed by an upper body movement, so upper lower movement. So with short rest, two moves together, then rest. The main reason for this is workout intensity. So instead of doing one move and then resting for like a minute, you're doing two big compound moves which burn a lot of energy and then resting in between. So your workout intensity is increased. Also focus on using free weights if possible because they take a lot more energy than sitting in a machine because you have to control and stabilize the movement throughout, which means more energy burnt. And like I touched on before, focus on compound exercises. So your things like squats, deadlifts, bench presses, and barbell rows because they burn the most energy and incorporate the most muscle. Also try and train your muscle groups two or three times a week decreasing the overall volume towards the end if needed for adequate recovery. And finally, with isolation exercises, things like bicep curls or seated leg extensions, use them at the end of your workout to bring up any lagging body parts. And what I've done, because I'm such a thoughtful guy, is I've sourced a workout of bodybuilding.com that incorporates all the training principles that I've described in this video. So I'll put the workout up on the screen for you to screenshot each exercise, there should be nine exercises and the first eight are supersets. So four supersets and then a finisher. So just before I wrap up this video, keep the questions coming because then I can keep the topics and information coming for you. Because like I said, if one person is asking the question, there might be 30 or 40 other people that want to know. So keep the questions coming and I'll keep the topics coming too. So there you go everybody, strength training for fat loss. If you got something out of this video, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out function.com for all things fitness, health and lifestyle. Give me a follow on Instagram and I'll be sure to see you in the next video. I really do appreciate you for watching and engaging and like I said, any more questions, topics or comments, drop them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Take care.